Hello friends, hope you are doing great. Welcome to my Java programming series. In this session, we will discuss a very interesting and important concepts in OOPS called as method overloading in Java. So in a very logical sequence, we will reveal and understand everything about this method overloading. Let's begin. So first of all, what is this method overloading? Method overloading is also called as early binding or it was also called as compile time polymorphism. Polymorphism in the sense, actually this is a, uh, in fact method overloading is a concept under polymorphism. Poly means multiple, morphism means forms. So a single function is having multiple forms. A same function is uh, is viewed and acted in different forms. It's called as polymorphism. Okay, nothing great to do with that. So first of all, what is method overloading? When two or more methods with the same name but difference in the number of arguments are defined is called as method overloading. First of all, difference in the number of arguments. So I'm having, if I, in my program, in my particular class, I'm having four or five methods. All the four or five methods should have should be having the same name, but there should be difference in the data type of the arguments parameters in the definition. In the definition of this method defined, there should be difference in the arguments, or else there should be number of arguments. If the data types is same, there can be a difference in the number of arguments, or there can be position of arguments. For example, if I am having int a int b in the next method I can define int a into b into c that is what difference in number of arguments or else uh, it can also observe this in the form of position of arguments for example I have taken int a char b in the next method I can define as char a into b char a into b so in three ways you can observe or it can be the combination of all the three also of either of them also so difference in type of arguments number of arguments and position of arguments okay and next thing is that why should you overload why should you overload after seeing some examples we will uh, come to know what is the purpose of this uh, overloading and for example I have taken a simple class in this I have defined a method called m1 with some definition any definition you can take uh, the same method name I have said you know what uh, here you can have anything modifiers turn type can be different but only thing is that method name should be same and inside the arguments should be different inside the arguments should be different here you haven't taken any argument and here you have taken integer argument and here you have taken double argument and you are having some unique definition inside each method but the name is same but the name is same the only thing is that data type is changing now I have defined an object for that uh, particular um, uh, class and I have I'm trying to call the methods o dot m1 o dot m1 in the cells how the compiler will know here see here I'm having the same method name but how the compiler will able to know to execute that particular m1 method if you are having same method name I'm having zero I haven't paused any argument so what it will do first it will check the m1 method present in this class so there are three m1 methods if there are three m1 methods if we'll try to match the parameter so it will try to search for a method definition which is not having any parameter defined so it, it matches with the definition and it will be executed the same for integer and the same for character if the definition is matched if the name first it should match name and the second it will search if the name is same it will search whether this particular data type is matching or not if the data type is matched then the method will be executed if the data type is not matched then we will search for another method until it found the requirement if it is not matched then it will not execute so here your output will be 0 dot m1 will be no argument m1 method 0 dot uh, o dot m1 will be int argument m1 method o dot m1 will be o dot m1 of 3 is integer no that's why int argument m1 method o dot m1 of 6.6 .6. so by default if you don't suffix with f it will be double so that's why double method will be executed here because of the parameter that we have passed is double so but you are having a same name so what is the advantage of that first we will compile and execute the program no argument m1 method zero argument int argument m1 method and double argument m1 method so what you are achieving because of this see this method overloading will reduce the naming burden on the user for example in c programming language you are having a function called abs fabs labs the uh, functionality is same the task is same but the type of inputs or the number of inputs are varying but the task is same so if the if there is no overloading for each and every input for floating point one method fabs for a long data type one method so different uh, methods and different names but the t functionality is same as a result what will happen naming burden will be in uh, increase uh, inc will be increased on the user 
so it will hamper readability and complexity so whenever you are having the same task but you but there is only difference in the number of arguments or number of parameters then why should you say a different name maintain the same name the task is same but only the data type is changing no so it may take same name but only difference in the definition of data types difference in the data types number or position so that, that is the purpose of this overloading concept in java okay understood this uh, classical example now let's move on to another example so there is a concept of automatic promotion or type casting in java uh, type casting in this method overloading see for example i have passed character here see character can be converted implicitly to integer data type okay if it is if the required data type is not present see in the in the method call you are passing a particular data type that is not available in the definition then what, what the compiler will do is that it will not err it will not raise any error it will try for a possibility whether i can type cast it i, I can type cast it so integer character uh, character can be type cast so first uh, we have passed the character is there any method with character definition not available the next possibility is that character can be type cast to integer so this method will be executed it will be converted into the ascii value so int argument m1 method will be executed with ascii value 65 next it is a for float method 6.6f is a float method do you have any method definition with the float data type no not available the next possibility the next higher data type the next higher data type is uh, remember type casting is always implicit but not explicit so smaller to higher but not higher to lower float is converted to double but double cannot be converted into float if it is not available then it will not raise any error but more method will be executed 6.6f this is a float method now what i should do that uh, first it will search for float method definition no integer is there no argument so it is not match no double is there so float can be converted to double so double argument m1 method will be executed so here int argument m1 method will be executed so that means the character is been converted to integer and here float argument m1 will method is executed that means the float is converted into double that's what implicit type casting is so if you compile ascii value of a is 65 and double argument m1 method so if i don't take uh, this integer also now now what i am doing is that i am not taking this integer also now what i will do what what will happen will the method will be executed see character is converted into integer so uh, what is the next possibility that it can do character can be see it, it works on the based on this principle so byte can be converted into short if short is not available then byte can be converted into integer if uh, integer is not available next long if it is also not available next to float if it is not available next to double the next possibility it will go for if all is fail then it will not execute anything so character can be converted into integer so i am not having integer i am not having the next possibility is long i am not having long definition method also the next possibility is float i am not having float definition also the next possibility is double see but it is not reverse so integer cannot be converted into character integer can be only converted into either long or float or double so it is increasing order of sizes so now character can be converted into double on the absence of integer long and float the next possible the next immediate possibility character to int if it is absent character to long if it is up long is absent then character to float first to preference to int next to long next to float at the end double now in the same uh, scenario what will be my output so character is uh, have passed integer is not available the next possibility is character can be converted into double yes it can be converted into double so this method will be executed now double argument m1 method will be executed now what will happen is that 6.6f so it will also be converted into double so two times double argument m1 method will be executed so the same call is matched two times we compile the program double argument m1 method you will get two times if i remove this also what will happen if i remove that then now what uh, what the error of m1 in class o over ov demo 2 cannot be applied in the given types so definitely it must find a match if the given match is not available it will raise an error so it either it should apply a type casting method or it should uh, find the direct data type but emptily it cannot 
without executing it will raise an error o dot m1 either it should execute any of the defined methods if it is failed to do then it will raise an error so make sure that the further required method call for the required data type that you have passed during the method call that particular method must be defined directly or indirectly through automatic promotion so let's move on to another example so in this I want to show the cases where ambiguity can arise. I have taken int i float f, or I have I can also take float f int i. Fine, right? See, uh, what I have taken position can be different. Data types are same, but position is different. So there must be only even if there even there is change in at least one parameter that is enough everything should not be same if everything is same then compiler will raise an error if if there is public word m1 int i comma int i again you are taking public word m1 int i comma int i how can it can identify it cannot identify there should be some uh, at least one parameter so that the compiler can identify so whenever you are passing 10 comma 10.5 f this is integer first compiler will check the first parameter this is float it will check the next parameters as it is matched this will be executed and now float first parameter is integer it is not matched so it will leave it it will not proceed further and now it is float yes it is correct now it will go for the next parameter 10 that is integer now this is matched so float int m1 method will be executed now uh, if I take o dot m1 of 10 comma 10 first argument 10 so what it is matched first argument is match next integer you are taking so integer second argument first it will check whether integer is float or not so it is it will not by here you are taking integer and it is here, here you are having float so it is a mismatch so both the data types should be present again if it if we check this method also one you are having float one you are having integer so it is an ambiguity so you may have one doubt uh, see I have matched this float uh, integer here then why can't this be converted into float integer should be converted into float right in the absence of uh, the next available data type see if I convert this method into integer is present okay if I present this method into float then the ambiguity arises because whether I am converting compare will confuse because whether I should convert this first argument to float or I should convert the second argument should float the compiler what compiler is doing it is unable to understand whether it is converting the matching the first argument with integer or it should ma it should convert the first argument to float so this is a severe ambiguity that's why the reason you cannot pass o dot m1 of 10 comma 10 and here automatic promotion fails one one reason is that 10 can be promote 10 can be matched with integer and the next possibility is that 10 can be matched with type cache to float okay the same way 10 can be converted to float and 10 can be matched with 10 so both are valid no so if both are valid then what the compiler should do if there's a severe ambiguity then th that's the reason compiler will raise an error for this call now the pro compiler will not raise any ambiguity okay. now let's compile this code into float m1 method float int m1 method uh, friends i think uh, you have understood the concept of this method overloading the purpose of concept of method overloading and how automatic promotion works uh, right so uh, take this example regarding this automatic promotion so I am giving this as an exercise so read the program understand the program carefully and post your output in the comment section hope you are able to see the program so post your output in the comment section and if you really understand the session okay let's conclude the session method overloading is also called as early binding or compile time why because uh, the which method it will uh, which method it has to execute among multiple methods which method I should execute the clarity is uh, get uh, given to the compiler during the process of compilation itself that's why it is called as early binding or compile time overloading. So what is this method overloading same method name but difference in type of arguments number of arguments or position of arguments why should you overload because it reduces the naming burden hence it improves readability and reduces the complexity that's the reason you should overload for the same functionality for the same functionality but there is only change in the input type of the inputs you've passed why should you take a different method name that is the reason behind this method overloading hope you have enjoyed the session if you have any doubts please do ask in the comment section we will definitely get back to you stay tuned for more keep learning see you in the next session bye bye